Welcome back to Exponential Africa. I'm Mick Mann, and as part of our mission to future-proof Africa, we are bringing you the latest and greatest in exponential technology and thought leadership around various topics. Today, I'm very lucky to be in the studio with Tiffany Vora. Tiffany Vora is the Singularity Youth Vice Chair of Biotech. Tiffany, welcome to the show. Thank you, I'm so pleased to be here. So Tiffany, do you want to tell us a bit about what is your actual role at Singularity University? As the Vice Chair for Biology and Medicine, I am a faculty member, so that's actually my happy place. I get to uh, look to see what companies are doing now, what's the new technology, what are the new applications. I get to talk to founders, I get to talk to VC, I get to talk to startups, I get to mentor folks, I get to talk with students, bring them all together in ways that are really maximize the impact of um, technologies that are changing biology, agriculture, healthcare, all of these really big interesting stuff that's all tied together with life. Amazing, so it's almost like you are you're constantly learning because you're learning yes. either from these incredible minds that you're meeting around the world and then you're also learning it by diving deep into these different uh, uh, explorations around biotech, healthcare, you know, uh, you know, how is it all changing our beings, this connected body. Um, so it's very exciting it sounds like. Yeah. It is, it's really exciting and you know as a, a faculty member at Singularity we're always telling people you need to be lifelong learners. Well I'm a lifelong learner, I get to do it every single day and it's what keeps me coming back every day knowing that every day I'm going to get up, I'm going to meet somebody new, I'm going to learn something new and see new ways to change the world. That's really great. Awesome and I love your new hair even. Thank you. Yes, so. it's pink now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, do you want to just tell us a little bit about uh, what is biotech actually mean? You know, we'll just break it down in, in layman's terms for us. Sure, so biotechnology is a group of technologies that is how we either investigate or how we use living things to do things that we want as humans. So if you think about digital biology, which is the framework we use at Singularity, that's a way of thinking about living systems the same way we think of computer code. So anything that you can do with a living system, you can also do with computer code. And that's because DNA, you can think of as an operating system. All life on Earth runs on the same open source operating system, and that's DNA. And so when we think of DNA that way, instead of thinking it as a physical molecule, we're thinking about it as information. And once we know how to digitize that information, then all the six Ds open up to us. We can democratize it, we can dematerialize it, we can do all these great things by treating biology as the technology. Wow, so exciting. I mean, there's just so many developments happening. Could you, could you tell us some of the latest and greatest uh, developments in, in, in your world that you've heard about recently? Sure, so um, technologically speaking, uh, the thing that I'm seeing that's most exciting is people are getting faster, better and cheaper at building long pieces of DNA. So we know how to read DNA, that's called DNA sequencing. We can do that super cheap, super fast, but actually building DNA is much a much harder problem. And in my mind, the biology revolution is really gonna happen when it's just as cheap to build DNA as it is to read the DNA back. Wow. And so there are companies that can have tripled the length of the piece of DNA that you can make. That's actually a really big deal because the hardest part right now is putting short pieces together. But if you can print out one long piece, then you don't have to do the assembly. That also helps with error rate and things like that. And what happens if you've got a long piece of uh, DNA? Well, then what I can do is drag and drop genetic engineering, where I can go onto a website and say, OK, I want a bacteria that can eat petroleum and turn it into light. And so I can, in the computer, I can move the pieces of DNA around. That'll build a module to let the bacterium do that thing. And then I click Add to Cart, and somewhere in a factory somewhere, someone prints off the piece of DNA I need, they package it, they ship it to me, and then all I have to do is boot it up in a living cell, and then the cell will run the program for me. Wow, it's that's super incredible. super exciting. That yeah. is so exciting. Is that using CRISPR technology, or how, how would that work? So you can think of CRISPR more like the eraser on the end of a pencil is the easiest way to think of CRISPR. So if I had a piece of DNA that I had ordered, and maybe there was a mistake in it, and I wanted to change it, I could change that with CRISPR. Or let's say I had uh, a human that had a disease and I could change some of the DNA sequences in order to erase that uh, DNA mutation that gives them the disease. And of course, as we know, back in November, there was the big news that there was a researcher in China who claims to have already done that with two baby girls who have already been born. And there's been a huge firestorm over that for a lot of reasons. Some of the reasons are technical, but a lot of them are ethical. He broke laws in order to do that. And for me personally, the technology actually isn't the hard part. It's how do we get people to feel that something that can change our whole species permanently is being done in a thoughtful way that is inclusive and respective. And it, we're really only using the tool for things we really need. 
Yeah, I mean, it's very scary if, uh, if you can actually do that. And it has been done already, you say, since yeah. in November last year. There has been no independent confirmation, but the claims are there, yes. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody in a lab somewhere that's doing it right. uh, privately. Right, and we can argue all day about the technology. We can argue all day at the ethics. At the end, you have two baby girls. They're people. They're real people, it's incredible. right? incredible. Uh, it's like when uh, IVF was first very popular, and people used to say babies who were born by IVF are less human than other people. No one would say that now. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So how do we think five years in the future, 10 years in the future, 20 years in the future, where we're seeing people who have had these technologies applied to them as still being fundamentally human? It's a really big question. It's incredible. And I mean, I think, do you think in the future, you know, they talk about this upgrade mm -hmm. and we're all going to get this upgrade, you know, and why wouldn't you get an upgrade? Because it's going to make you better. Well, the answer is because you don't have enough money. That would be the reason, yeah. That so it's not universal reason. basic uh, no. services. Well, at least that's not the way people are talking about now. Um, I was kind of on the fence as to whether we would first see this in China or whether we would see it here in Silicon Valley with people who have a lot of money and not a habit of following the rules. And so China won, won. <laughs> um, but so then the question becomes, do we really want a world where rich people don't get cancer anymore, where rich people don't get AIDS, where rich people don't get sickle cell disease or these other things? That's not a world that particularly interests me. What yeah. interests me is a world where every person has access to these technologies that can make the future better for them and for their families and for everyone else around them, not just for the people who happen to be lucky enough to have enough money. No, I think that's, that's, that's so awesome. And I mean, that's what we're all about at Singularity yeah. University is we're trying to democratize technology and, and, and create this abundance in the world so that we all can have a better life and we can all live Mm -hmm. how we've always dreamed. Right. But thanks so much for joining us on the show. This is Tiffany Vora. Make sure to subscribe and check out for the next Exponential Africa.